Hope everybody is having a great day. We're here today live with our good friend, Sean Lardo. How are you doing, Sean? I am great, Dan. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Um, I don't know about you, but it's, you know, it's so warm here in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, we, we just had that conversation the other day with Simon down in Miami. Um, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, balmy 57 degrees here today uh, and it's rained for two consecutive days. So, yes, it's uh, it's 50 degrees here right now. And uh, uh, I'm just loving it. You know, <laughs> it could be worse. Right. It could be snowing. And uh, I mean, I do know that's around the corner. Um, gosh, I, you, but here's the crazy thing. This is Michigan. Right. And, you know, you, of course, you and PA. I mean, it's it, it's yeah. all the same. Right. So today it's 50. Tomorrow will be 51. Thursday will be 69. Friday will be 67, and then we're back to 42 on Sunday. So it's like, it's yeah, nuts. no, I, I know. So we're yeah, we're sitting around the same. Actually, we're we're gonna be at 77 degrees on Friday, 79, 79 on Thursday, 77 on Friday, sunny both days, and then we're gonna drop down to 52 degrees on Saturday. So wow. yeah, that's so much getting fun. ready. Yes, and I, I already see that Noe's on here talking, you know, smack. Yes, Noe, you're down in Miami. Um, <laughs> it is warmer there. Uh, but, you know, it's really nice here right now. The sun is out, so I'm happy. Not really. It's raining, but I'm pretending. Yeah, so Noe, I mean, you might have, like, sun and the beach and the clubs, but we have snow. So I just, I mean, you just can't <laughs> top that, bud. <laughs> I mean, I can't make a sandcastle, but I can make a snowman. No. Yeah, exactly. Snow angel, snowman. So yes. we're, we're here today to talk about um, finding hidden money. And as MSP, who who doesn't want more money, more revenue? Um, and Sean's here. We're going to talk about leveraging additional revenue um, streams to increase profitability. And I'm really excited about this. Uh, Sean, I don't know if everybody knows Sean or not, but if you if you don't today, you are going to love Sean by the end of this event because Sean is a he is a smart smart man. Um, he, um, he you know you could tell with the gray in the beard um, with <laughs> and I brought my beard brush. That is so awesome. See, uh, I don't um, let it grow long enough to to need a brush really. Um, I you know I I just let it. You know, like every other day, I just trim it down. And well, but, uh, I figure this just according to Taylor, the Fifty Shades of Grey, that I see this as being um at the tender, at the young, ignorant age of twenty one that I am, I just am yeah. sort of seasoned. Also, that's it. Exactly. In fact, I need to go to the DMV because there's something wrong with my my uh, license because it shows that I'm a lot older than that. So um, I, I'm calling it you know fake news from the DMV. So. Um, <laughs> But Sean, I mean, your, your history, man, I mean, you go back, um, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, first and foremost, I, I want to thank you for um, your service, you know, nine years as a decorated U.S. Army veteran. Um, thank you very thank much you. for your service uh, to our country. And um, absolutely. Uh, thanks. Yeah, that's just, that's awesome. And so 20 plus years, um, you know, with the focus on sales and marketing and, um, you know, I, I, definitely can tell that you have a very strong passion for for sales and marketing it, it uh something that you know is part of your um you know part of your being how you're wired right and um but doesn't Absolutely. mean that if it's if you aren't necessarily wired like that today it doesn't mean that you can't be like that right um sure. you know if you you know if you just like anything if you focus and put your time and energy onto being you know better at what you want to do you can, you can achieve it. And uh, I don't, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think that when you were born um, 21 years ago, that, you know, you, you, you know, came into this world with like a sales and marketing hat on, right? No, um, I talked to my guidance counselor a few years back and we were trying to figure out my future. Um, it wasn't <laughs> there. We, we didn't see so, it there. I was more like along yeah. the lines of like neuroscience and stuff like that. But, you know, I just happened to find myself here. Um, right. and, and, I, and I don't even think it's even about being in sales and marketing even as much as it is about uh, relationships. It's finding the right people yeah. that, and, and also provide solutions. You know, I, right. I think that's always a common, mis a common mistake for people is they think that sales, we, especially for 
uh, people that ever look like they use the used car salesman, which I think is a horrible cliche because yeah. even used car salesmen, they, if they do, if they're right, they're right. They listen to you. They, they feel the need. They try to help you get what you, what you do need. Uh, and they build a relationship in the, in the process of doing so. So sales and marketing is, is kind of, to me, that's the passion of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just looking at your background, I mean, you've worked in, you know, large enterprise, um, companies like Exxon, uh, Exxon yep. Mobil, um, Thomson Reuters, uh, that's awesome big company. Um, I mean, uh, we have lots of clients that are using different Thomson Reuters products and I'm sure many MSPs are as well. Um, uh, is it g- generic? Gen- generic? Gen- generac. 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 They, I'm not uh, familiar. Why is that? Why? For some reason, I'm thinking um, Generac manufactures um, uh, generators. Generators. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's what they do. Yes. So yes, that's the, that is the company. Um, so they, I actually worked with them and tandem with them. They were a client of mine at one point when I was in, when I was, you know, just like with Thompson Norris and those guys. Uh, when I started my in my early days in tech sales, I worked with development tools and Thompson Reuters. They they hired us on me and my team. We actually helped them develop some things in house for them. So I was part of them by default. Uh, Generac, I helped them where they were trying to enable their distributors to sell more generators. They were they had a hard they had a challenge they had difficult times with communication. They had communication gaps with their partners, and they also had communication gap not just communication gaps but also um, understanding the orders and educating them on how to expand their deal. Actually what this whole call today is about. Awesome. And you know, in addition to that, I see you got uh, Verizon and you've also worked through um, both the mid and uh, mid market and SMBs and uh, especially, you know, specifically with MSPs and uh, enablement of partners and uh, MSPs with uh, mind matrix. Um, yep. I uh, recreated and took a market um, or took to the market, the MSP Advantage program. Uh, you know, of course, Datto has got uh, the Market Now program that uh, mm-hmm. comes from My Matrix. Uh, Zift yep. um, aligned um, channel programs with uh, large and small vendors and their partners. And of course, uh, you just celebrated your one year anniversary. A round of applause. Uh, one year anniversary with OIT VoIP. And uh, the, you know, Ray's team, and uh, um, uh, you, you fit very well into the group there. Um, you just thank you. Uh, I, I mean that full heartedly. You know, just you know, you've uh, you know, Ray's got a uh, a great team, and um, you know, and you know, bringing you in and having that uh, you know your background and your passion um, is just it's an awesome fit for them. So, um, what? Uh, <laughs> I'm seeing Ray. Oh, it's, this is not the Ray show. This is not the Ray. Yeah. No, Ray. You have your own yeah. webinars. Stick to your he, own. He's trying to hijack this, but you know, I mean, it's <laughs> it's Ray. You know, but uh, um, oh, he's just just. I'm just watching. Yeah. He, oh, it, it's like a silent assassin. That's what this exactly. is. Exactly. Um, so, no, and yeah, I would say as far as fitting with the team, absolutely. Uh, working with Ray, Noe, and Simon, all those guys uh, has been great. Um, when we, Ray and I have been friends for, actually, Ray was part of the MSP Advantage program way back yonder. Uh, he was also okay. part of the reason why I had such great success with migrating my, or moving upstream to some of the larger clients, like we worked with Dado and whatnot. Uh, so, and so Ray and I have been friends for all these years, and we, uh, I actually, I actually used him. He was my champion for many years and talk to, talking to MSPs, trying to talk sense into them on how to grow their business and why to use us. So it worked very well. And Last year, it's just kind of like the the stars are the stars aligned. Um, I had finished an opportunity where we took a company to acquisition, and Ray was in a position and team was in a position. They wanted to scale, so he needed some, he wanted to find somebody that had a seasoned background that could actually enable the partners to grow, find more partners, and and take it to the next level. And that's what we've done. So it was and it's been fun. I mean, you guys, if, awesome. if you guys don't watch us on social media, it's not as if we're uh, we're definitely not. Um, we're not very dry witted. That's for damn sure. So exactly. Yeah, I've, I've always said, you know, when it comes to, you know, my team, um, I don't expect everyone to jump out of bed and do somersaults and, you know, I'm going to work today. Right. I mean, let's, let's face it. We, you know, we, we all have to work, but yes, you, you, you have, you, ha- you can enjoy what you do. Right. And, uh, um, so <laughs> Taylor, uh, Taylor does somersaults. Um, 
And uh, I, I, you just don't want to see me do somersaults because, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just not a, a spring chicken, you know, uh, you know, like Taylor. And, you know, even though we are 21, right, Sean? Um, yeah, uh, it's, well, I'm a cartwheel guy at 21. I haven't, you know, yeah. I have gymnastics practice later, so we got to make this quick. That's um, true. Yeah. And I have uh, my MMA fighting a little <laughs> bit later too. So, um, so with that being said, <laughs> Hey, all five foot four and 165 pounds of me, right? Oh my um, lord! Yeah, have, so it's. Yeah. I haven't seen the ones in decades. So I don't know. I'm I'm over 200 always. I just yeah. So I mean, I and I do drink milk because it makes my bones strong, and you know. <laughs> so, so we're here today to talk about um, finding that hidden money, and uh, yes. I think th- there are so many opportunities that as MSPs we often leave those dollars on the table and um, we're, we're not always sure where to search for it, or we don't have the focus of where we can find it. And um, so with that being said, uh, I'm going to uh, turn it over to you, Sean, and uh, we'll, we'll kick it off and start talking about uh, uh, the, the, the money, the good old money. Sure. Abs- absolutely. Thank you, Dan. So you already said the title, so I'm not going to get into that, but I'm, well, I'll preface this whole webinar by saying, you know, the things I've learned over the years is um, there's a lot, there's a lot of variables why you leave money on the table, right? There's a lot of way, there's a lot of reasons why you don't get yourself engaged in the right manner to, to take advantage of your existing opportunities. There's, you know, and that's fine. So what I, today during this, during this call, I want to cover some things that, you know, that are, I've sourced out other stuff. This is not my opinions all the way through. I do, I do support these though, but that way it's not me talking. I'm not the, I'm not the residential expert. However, you know, let's talk about a makeup of a traditional MSP. Um, I've been, I've been in this business long enough that I've, and and I've dealt with enough MSPs to see them graduate and migrate through the process of from break fix to MSP um, and then eventually turn into MSSPs even. Uh, And so everybody actually is like, what is a man? What is, what's managed services? Um, Great question. It's, it's really, it's subjective to who you're talking to and what's going on. Uh, But what I did was I pulled this report from CompTIA and I think that you can see the breakdown in various forms of where revenue is coming from. So, you know, when you're looking at help desk support, that's traditional network, uh, cybersecurity, et cetera. But these are all components of percentage of revenue that you're making up within your business. Okay. But managed service providers, they're always looking for a way to become a holistic, you know, uh, provider. And that's, you know, my next point is why do MSPs become partners? You know, it's really simple. First, they might come to us because they have an immediate opportunity that they have to address. Many times in, in our world, uh, they, you know, we are, we are a VoIP provider. So they come and they say, hey, we have people that need some phone service. They're already an MSP client of mine. What do I got to do with you? You know, what do we do next? How does it work? That's one. Two is MSPs have identified, just based off the graph I showed you prior, that one-stop shop. They identified a gap in their offering. So they know that they don't have VoIP, but they know they don't have a cybersecurity play. So they realize they'd better add that on. So that way they maintain their client base. They don't go elsewhere. Also, adding on other, other types of things like ours for reselling makes people, it increases revenue. It gives them the opportunity to upsell and cross-sell. They end up becoming sticky, you know, which is extremely important. Long-term contracts, offering a full value concept, it's really important for them. Um, the last but not least, a lot of partners you see become them because they were just sold on it. I've been to plenty, conf- plenty of conference to watch. We go to these really nice, elegant parties, lots of drinking occurs. All of a sudden, next thing you know, you're, you're now a reseller for about seven other companies and you're getting all their emails and you have no clue who they were at that point. So these are typical reasons why you see that people do become partners. Um, with that said, though, the next thing that people want to look at is the relationships and the expectations. So back to that party, right? You don't remember who you even signed up with and you don't know what the expectations are or what, what, they, what you should expect from them. Um, but very high level, they wanna be able to trust you. They wanna make sure you have the expertise to support what they're doing that you're, that you're a legitimate business, um, that there's growth potential, that there's respect and resolutions for everything. Communication is crucial and easy to do in business. Um, you can't pick more important requirements, but that goes both ways, right? Uh, it's, you know, for vendors like us, we are really trying our best to give you what you need, that we think what you need. We're trying to be partner first. However, that means that there's some onus that falls on you as a partner as well, right? You have to have responsibilities. So 
and, and by the way, I love this picture because for any of you that don't know, I have four daughters. Um, so there would have been like actually six feet in my face at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> um, you know, six, the, the, the youngest is 11, so she wouldn't have been there at the same time. So thank God I, I, I separated them with a little bit of gap between some years. But, you know, this is the actual reality. And so the whole goal is to try to, again, ease the ease of doing business is extremely important for us. Well, you know, one now, thing I just, if you don't mind me jumping in here is, you know, when we're talking, um, talking about these partner relationships and expectations, um, there, I guess two points here. One, you, you just asked a little bit ago, like, what is an MSP, right? You know, there's all these different definitions and it comes down to like, what is a vendor, right? What does a vendor provide for you? What do they do for you? What do you expect from them? And, um, you know, and these are many of those things. So just like you're developing, your clients are developing a relationship with you and they're going through that entire process, you need to have that same process or similar process um, when it comes to, you know, selecting your vendors. And, um, and these are critical aspects to ensure that the vendor that you've, you've selected, um, you know, line number one or the, the last line isn't, you know, they gave me free drinks, right? It, it needs to be so much more than that. Um, because, you know, let's, let's face it, when you select a vendor, you are putting your signature on the line that uh, that is a vendor that you are going to represent and you are going to sell their products or services. And, um, you know, and it's team together, team apart. And uh, so, you know, if, you know, nothing is perfect, nothing is rock solid, but if something happens, you know, you can't say, oh, my vendor, you know, it's because it's you and, and yep. you need to make sure that you have the vendor. So when you're saying, yep, we're going to work on this, get this taken care of, and you take full responsibility, that you have a vendor behind you that is going to have your back. Absolutely. It's extremely important. Um, again, credibility is everything. The day you start representing us is a day that you're putting your name on the line, your reputation. So if you're not coming with a full-fledged product, or, you know, or you're not coming with a, a company that's going to take care of the business, you're the one left holding the bag at the end. The vendor is, of, of course, we, you know, we lose credibility amongst the partner base. But for you as an MSP, your business is all local usually. You know, if you're an average, an average MSP, you're, you're more of a local business. You can't afford to have bad, you know, it's like a, a restaurant. They get enough bad reviews, nobody goes to the restaurant anymore. And you right. don't want to be that. So yeah, you're absolutely right though, Dan. Um, so, so that's the thing. And so that's something that we take, that we really, really focus on here. You know, responsibilities. We're here to enable, empower, and educate. You know, we want, we, we're here to help you any way we can, of course, but we'd rather teach you how to fish, right? And we want to make sure that you have everything you need, all the resources. And so we're not, at the end of the day, there can't be any finger pointing, right? And this is, by the way, I, this is the best picture I could find because Matt Connolly, if he's not watching, he'll, he'll, he probably is and he loves us. But, you know, finger pointing gets us absolutely nowhere, right? If I don't educate you and empower you to do your job, to go out and sell this and teach you and treat you as a, as a partner, then you're going to, at some point, you're going to falter and you're going to point at me. It's not going to work out well at all. So let's talk about how we start addressing these things, though. You know, when we, when we look at this, we, we started to look at, we focused on what were the top business challenges for channel partners, okay? And, and these are some of the primary needs that you see every day. You know, 70% aren't able to connect offerings to buyers' needs. Okay, they uh, poor con poor content. 65% have poor content quality or simply can't find the content. These are coming from partners saying to, to their vendors, "Where do I go? Where do I find these things?" 55% of partners cited a lack of co-branded content as a challenge. So you know that's a huge huge problem because they don't if if they want to have their logo tied to you, they can't if you don't have a way of doing this co-branded content. And then 73% of partners say vendor channel programs are too complex. That is a huge, huge problem for most vendors. So, you know, we focus on a lot of these areas because we want to make sure, we want to keep the MSPs doing what they do best, which is dealing with our customers, finding new customers, hopefully, adding new revenue on, okay? So when we started doing this, we started focusing on marketing responsibilities, right? Obviously, internally, we had to do a check, make sure that we were doing the right, the right job for marketing. So we focused on three major areas, and this is where MSP should focus. First and foremost, anybody says, if you build it, they'll come. That was only in the field of dreams. That does not exist. Nobody mm -hmm. builds it and they just come. So you have to create brand awareness, okay? Case in point, over a two-year period, there was over 900% growth in, in mobile searches for near me today, tonight searches, okay? Now, 
that's brand awareness. That's people getting to know who your name is, where to find you, what you even do. That's the next thing is your demand gen. What do you do and why should I even talk to you? Why should I be interested in what you have to say? It's extremely important to educate people. I mean, I think one of the best things that I ever saw, like my mother, I was telling Dan about this earlier, um, she watches TV, right? And those IBM commercials come on where they're like, we process 2 million and blah, 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 malware and phishing and, and you know, well, and my mother's like, wow, what does that mean? That's amazing. I, know, I must need that. I'm like, you, you don't even have Wi-Fi, mom. You don't have the internet. You're not even on it. So you're, I think you're okay. But that commercial alone is demand generation. It talks about why you should talk to IBM, why you should understand what's going on. Same rules apply in our world. We're no different, especially in MSP world. So you guys should be leveraging that and talking about that. Lead collection, make it freaking easy for people to actually fill out a form. Now, I know that you know one thing that we do know for sure is that MSP websites don't have tons of traction. Not when it comes to new client base. A lot of times it's people that are existing customers that are looking for support tickets or whatever it may be or some, some help in some way. So landing pages are very good though. You need to get your name out there. You need to give a reason people want to talk to you and you have to give them a way to communicate with you easily. Okay. Um, so that takes me to my next point though, content strategy, very important. So as we're providing stuff for you, and again, we're still talking about leaving things on the table here, you know, people, vendors all like us are, are, have, are provide, provide content for partners. Okay. However, it's important that you understand what your content strategy should consist of. You are an MSP. You are trying to bring, you're trying to show a holistic approach to what you guys do. Okay. So when you're determining your strategy, you need to determine who the audience is that you're talking to, where you can find them, what makes you unique, you know, where, and you know, how you're going to manage the content too. You can't just be one and done. I don't know how many times I see online where I read MSPs that say, you know, what are you guys doing for marketing? And they're like, ah, I sent out a mailer, didn't work. Yeah, no shit, it's one mailer. You know, no, it's there when, okay, so let's talk about beer. If you drink beer, how many times do you see their commercials? You know, every Super Bowl, you get to watch the Anheuser-Busch commercial, right? And you get to see commercials and, and TV ads, along with radio ads, along with social media ads. So if they're yes. doing it, why aren't you doing it? And it's definitely not a strategy. I mean, if you're trying one thing and um, I mean, it's, you're just trying one thing and you, you can't become defeated uh, if you try something and you don't get the results that you were, you were hoping for um, because there isn't a, a silver bullet, right? You know, it's uh, something that you have to continually pound at on a regular basis and, and have that strategy to ensure that, you know, the, the repetition of uh, your messaging is there to be able to, um, you know, reach and attract uh, or strike a chord with those prospects. Because, I mean, let's face it, you know, I mean, we, we five, 10 years ago, we were talking about how people are being bombarded with, you know, all the different types of communication. Today, wow, I mean, it's just nonstop. I mean, an email, you know, you know, you look at your email and, it could ultimately be, um, you know, like a death trap because there's just so much communication out there. Absolutely. And then you get buried. That's the thing. Social media, emails, you get buried. So consistent quality messaging has to occur for people to even know that you exist. If you don't do it, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice and you're doing your, and you're doing people that are prospects of the service. They want to know you exist. They need your help. So Let's talk about that though. You mentioned, we just mentioned email, social. Let's talk about delivery vessels because that's the next thing. Once you develop your content and understand who you're talking to, you determine what channels you're going to go down the path of. So I provided some statistics here and especially because I hear on, on our calls all the time, um, I always hear people trying to decide on what we're trying to accomplish, you know, or what, where should we go? LinkedIn, should we go Facebook, Twitter? What's best? There's not one best. It's based off where you're most comfortable at the end of the day where you have a large network too. However, something to take note of, Facebook, there's over 80 million small businesses using Facebook's free business tools. Small business, that's typically right in the wheelhouse of all MSPs. They're selling to their local, uh, their local plumbers, their local uh, hardware stores, garages, restaurants, et cetera. They're on here and it's a good, it, and, and Facebook is great for localization and marketing. Um, LinkedIn, Bob Kobich always talks about his LinkedIn stuff. He's been doing those videos for a while now. It, he, he's right in line with 66% of the video marketers in 2019, they already said that in 2020, they were going to focus and make LinkedIn part of their video marketing strategy. So he's already in line with that. Now, the problem is, is his audience there? I don't know. That's for him to determine, right? Now, I did put on Instagram and Twitter too. So, you know, we'll be sharing this deck, I'm sure. So by all means, steal it, look at it. The stats are great and, and make it your own. Figure out what, what makes sense for you guys and where you should, where you should do most of your hunting, of course. 
So I got a question um, for you on, um, so when you take a look at Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, whatever social media platform that's out there, if you're an MSP today and you have not established any of these, um, uh, how does one get started without feeling as if, um, you know, because you, you, you have to, um, you know, crawl before, you know, you walk and walk yes. before you run. So how, how do you get started? Sure. Uh, well, okay. So let's be clear. Social media is very good for a couple, for a few reasons to begin with. First, it's free, right? Um, second, it has some of the best search engine optimization involved. If you're an active person on it, if people Google your name or Google your company, or whatever, they're gonna find that through, they're probably gonna find LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or something, right? So, you know, as far as getting started though, create, I mean, if you're running a business, you should have a business page for each one. That's the first thing for when it comes down to LinkedIn and Facebook, of course, you want a business page. Um, create that, but then also have your own personal one because you wanna engage in conversations. When you're doing a business page, especially on Facebook, you can't really, you can, you can make comments, you can post things, which is what we do all the time, but then you need to, you need to help grow your, your, your audience. But if people don't see your content going out and they won't, if they don't like your page or somebody's not sharing it, then they won't know it exists. So you should engage just like you would. I mean, hell, how do you make friends? Don't change what you're doing. You make friends in a few different reasons. One is you might have the same teams that you guys like to watch. Like, like, even though, you know, Keith is a Dallas Cowboys fan. He cries every weekend about the Cowboys and some other in first place and they have a losing record. Um, I'm still cool with them. We're still friends. You know, I'm a Steeler fan because we're one of the greatest teams in the history of NFL football. Um, actually the greatest, but that's besides the point. So it comes down to we, uh, you know, you find friends in this manner, find things that are, that put you in certain communities. Case in point, I found your community when, when COVID started happening and things were shutting down and we were trying to figure out things. I work with MSPs and I wanted to understand how to best work with MSPs during this time. So I joined your group. You graciously accepted me into the group. I inter I intermingle with everybody here. And I don't, you know, that's how I did it. And, and I've built, I've built business from that. I provided solutions for people because of that too. So that's how, I mean, again, there's no one way of doing it. Be yourself, be genuine, find content that people really want to read about, help people out and also be a connector. If, if I know that I can help you with something that I, but I don't, I personally can't, but I know that Keith can help you. Why not make that introduction and help the person, you know, and put Absolutely. it out there. Yeah. Chances are, if you have a question, so does 20 other people has that same question. So why not help them all at the same time? And the key word that you mentioned is engagement. You know, when I think a lot of times when posts, you know, you, you put a post out there, um, maybe somebody will comment, but it's, it's critical that you, you engage with that person. Don't just like, you know, like if they make a comment to something you put on your business page, um, don't just like it, respond back to them, you know, try to get a conversation started um, so that, you know, you uh, start to develop that relationship with them. Um, Absolutely. If you, if you just like what they said, so it's just kind of like waving, right? It's just kind of, you know, like a wave and a nod. <laughs> Um, or smirking. Yeah. We're all, so we're, we're all driving, right. we're all driving Jeeps for Harleys. Is that what you're saying? You get to just, right, exactly. Yes. You know, uh -huh. so. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it should be. And, and again, we're here to all, we're all here to help each other. Not one of us has the right answer. Not all the time for sure. I mean, unless you're Ray, cause Ray has a very large head and has tons exactly. of information. It's amazing. Yeah. But otherwise, no, we're all here to help each other. And that's actually one of the, that's the, that's the mantra of our company too, is we're very much about community engagement in that regard. So, you know, it's very fitting. That's why in success follows, period. Um, and there's a message here from Brian. Um, uh, he mentions that he sees a lot of MSPs um, with you know horrible SEO content on their websites. And so it doesn't give them any kind of ranking uh, as far as, you know, you know, from a Google perspective. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that means I, so, so that's an easy way. And, and, and I think I know what Brian referring to, but he, I'm sure the one thing, like I said, is, Take advantage of the social media instead because you will get you'll get the algorithm to move you'll get more traction uh there are pay per click campaigns you can run there's so many things you can do with it um you might take advantage of it and a lot of it's very cost effective too so once you understand your messaging you understand where your audience is you're gonna spend a few dollars but you're gonna spend it anyway you know so you might as well get you might as well spend it on something that's actually going to do something for you you should be marketing and selling with intent okay it's always with intent not just happenstance like holy shit, i got a deal that's not how that works. You've already worked your butt off to work with your customers and they've already, and they've referred you to other customers. Take that same concept and apply that to this. So 
and even and add to that then working with your existing client base another thing that to really focus on is email marketing right so it's not just social media so yes we have all these roles that have come out from gdpr and whatnot where there's going to be opt-ins and whatnot but anybody you meet anywhere that's part of a conference or a networking engagement they've all signed off there's already been a disclaimer knowing that they're that they are going to be a lead somewhere so there's always those leads that are sitting there email marketing if you look at the numbers right now we're at 3.9 billion users, right? As of 2019, it's projected to go to 4.3 billion in 2023, okay? You don't believe in email marketing? Well, for every $1 you spend, you're looking at an average return of $42. I don't know, that's pretty big deal, I think. I don't know. It's massive, yeah. Okay, so, and yeah, um, you. I think you mentioned a question at one point, Dan, on our previous call about, what about people that you know unsubscribe? That's gonna happen anyway, you know? But again, it's not that if you build it, they will come thing is not in effect. So you're gonna have to do something. You wanna, and, and when you create these campaigns, you're not making, this is not a sales campaign. This is an educational campaign. This is a did you know campaign. This is not intrusive. The, the call to action is more about, hey, if you, wanna know, if you wanna learn more, click here. It's not, hey, schedule time with a sales rep. That's not what you're doing. You can if you like, but that's not what you have to do. Um, and we also thought about choosing, you know, Choose an efficient email marketing software that fits your needs. Now, this is a list that I pulled from one of the sites that I that I I get a lot of. I'm involved in a lot of different groups that I get a lot of information from. So this is what they decided were their 10 best email marketing softwares. If you're not using them, that's fine. I know that you can even look at companies like uh, I know Connectwise, for instance, has their own email campaign manager. Um, you can look at using. Um, MailChimp or Constant Contact, they're all out there, but at least look at that, but don't purchase it until you're ready. Make sure again, marketing with intent, all right? Um, so after you talk about sales, let's talk, or after you talk about marketing, let's talk about sales real quick. Sales has a very key responsibility, you know, and it's really, again, this is about you leaving money on the table again. First off, have a process, have a sales and prospecting process. They're not the same, okay? And this, in a prospecting process, this is the leads that you're generating and you're going after. You meet somebody, what do you do step-by-step? Step. Make a phone call, send an email, whatever it is, right? What does the process look like? I made, I purposely put this stat in here, you know, that because you can see here that 92% of sales pros give up after the fourth call. Hell, I know in some of our calls with some of the MSP owners, they talk about not even making phone calls at all. You know, they go to a networking meeting, get a bunch of business cards, they never even reach out to the person, okay? Yeah. That doesn't do you any good. So if they're not even having the first call, if sales pros aren't, having, aren't going past the fourth call, look at 80% of prospects say no four times before they say yes. Four times they say no. And, you know, it comes down to, you know, you, you have to put the work in, right? You have Absolutely. to, you got to develop that relationship. Um, you know, it's, it's not a one-time thing and all of a sudden they're going to say, okay, I'm sold. Um, you know, but also, uh, you know, one of the things for me is uh, when when vendors call, um, you know, I, let's face it, we're all busy. We all have a lot of things going on. Uh, sometimes I don't take the call and it goes to voicemail and, you know, and it's just, it is what it is. But um, sometimes, you know, I'll not respond to that call and I'll be glad that they made additional calls because if they didn't, because I, I just keep thinking, okay, they're going to call back. <laughs> and when they call back, um, it might be a better time for me and I'll pick that call up and I'll talk to them. And I, I know, I you know there's many situations where I want to do business with them. It's just, I don't have the time. And then they are persistent and I'm so grateful for their persistency that, um, I, you know, I'll grab that next call and all of a sudden they, they got the sale because I want to do business with them, but it's just, I'm thankful for their continued uh, follow-up. Absolutely. It's, I mean, I, I, I can talk about a simple, a simple situation for me it was a couple of years ago. Um, I, I live in Pittsburgh and the, uh, I kept getting phone calls from the Pittsburgh pirates to buy season tickets, which if anybody watches sports, they know the pirates were God awful. So it's really hard to watch them and it's really hard to invest in tickets on a team. that's so, so bad. Although I am a huge fan in general and they kept calling. I kept, I kept pushing them off. And then they, they were calling asking about event tickets too, like group tickets. And we decided to do a, a family event and they called me. I'm like, Hey, what, what? And I answered and talked to them and I ended up buying like 35 tickets for like very, a very good price. And I would never have answered, but I had the situation arise and I said, yes. And I bought like, I bought 35 to 40 tickets from my family and my friends, you know? So 
that's obviously a simple example, but that's a fact of life of buying and sales. Nothing changes. And I know MSPs are on the list now saying, oh, but that's not us. It's different for our people. No, it's exactly the same. Your consumer is my consumer. Our consumers are the same consumers as people that are selling the pirates tickets because you don't know who they are or what they are. You can't prejudge anybody. Yeah. And silence does not mean they're not interested. Correct. Absolutely. That means they're probably busy. And if they ignore you long enough, I mean, you know, I, 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 I have a girlfriend that she ignores me on a regular, so she's still <laughs> around. So she's obviously interested. Um, exactly. So, <laughs> so yeah. So again, sales, very important, you know, have a process, not only have a process, but once you're talking, people create value for the customer, manage your relationships. So again, back to, I see something that they could use. I should be able to identify how I fit my solution into their needs or the additional things I resell. You know, again, in the VoIP world, we're phones, we're a commodity. My goodness, it's such an easy thing to sell. Okay. But it's a matter of you identifying when you're in the office, you look around and say, wow, those phones look old. What are you guys using? You know, are you during, during this whole, and, and Ray loves this, I'm going to say it again, the COVID and during the new norm. Um, how many people had to work from home? In our world, it was like, oh my goodness, any company that had an on prem solution, they were struggling because they didn't have a way of conducting business or communication. So they, a lot of our partners, had a nice increase in business because they're like, hey, we need hosted seats. We need to be able to work from anywhere. You know, this work from anywhere thing is not going to end anytime soon. You know, working from home, working from anywhere. I've been doing it for years, but some people it's brand new to. So for us, it was an easy add on. So we had to educate our partners on what to say, you know, um, social monitoring. We've been talking about it already. Ask, answering questions, seeing people in group chats, talking about things. That's a sales rep's responsibility also. It's also the owners, the MSPs. Typically, the owners are sales, the salespeople, first and foremost. I see a lot of monitor doing it, which is great. So social monitor is extremely important to pay attention to. Um, referrals. The, be, the greatest thing I learned in all these years is the MSP owners are the greatest salespeople of all time. They have the highest sales conversion percentages. It's amazing. They convert 90% of all the leads they get. And they tell me about it. And they're proud of it. And they should be. It's a, great, it's a great percentage to have. The only problem is that's because they're mostly referrals. And you only get some referrals at a time. And 90% of consumers trust referrals from people they know. So it means you did a great job as an MSP, but they confuse it as being the best salesperson. That just means you're great at your services. It means you, you took care of them. You engage, you took care of business. They didn't have problems. They can trust you. You're a trusted resource. That is worth a million dollars every time, right? The problem is not enough people know that you do that. Not enough people you're selling to. Your audience isn't large enough. That's why I started with the marketing. That's why I'm now talking about sales. One big important thing though, and I hear this often, I know a lot of MSPs that have bought multiple different, have moved from PSAs to CRMs and back and forth and did different things. They have, they have, they have disparate systems. Keep your data organized, okay? It's extremely important. Keep your database organized. This is a great, great graph. Now this talks about the revenue impact if you're automating adoption in CRMs. So we automate as much as we can in our business, okay? It's extremely important because a lot of the back end admin tasks, they take up way too much time. So a lot of times people just don't get, they don't get to it sometimes because they're busy doing their core job. But you can see the revenue increase by doing this. You know, you're, and I know people are looking at, looking at this saying, but I'm like a million dollar company. What does that mean to me? Don't worry about the dollar amount. Look at the percentage increase instead then. You know, from the looks of this, you're talking, this is three times more. This is a, this is a, this is a huge, huge growth for you. So if you can automate your data and you can keep your CRM in check and it gives you the ability to actually segment your business, attack who you need to attack. And, and let's, let's put it in, let's put it in perspective here. Let's give it a simple example. You hire a new guy today to go be your sales rep and you say, here's our existing customers or here's our, here's our database. And it's filled with your existing customers and people that never were customers and people that stopped being customers. He should know, he or she should know who, who is who in this contact list. Okay, it's extremely important. Reason being is because you're gonna develop a process, a sales process, a prospecting process based off what you want them to say to you, to you, you want them to say to this list. If, it's, if you try a one size fits all approach, you're gonna, you're gonna insult some of your existing customers by saying the same stuff you've already sold to them before and I'm like, you, you, you lose credibility. Okay, so why would you do that? So you should have a, a, the ability to, set, to separate these lists, right? And then have your guide know what to say. Okay, hey, I want you to go to our existing customers and we're gonna, we just signed a deal with OIT VoIP to resell their product. We want you to, none of them have our phone service today. We want you to go into this. 
We want you to go into this conversation and let people know that, hey, we now have a VoIP provider. We can now provide phone service. Here's who you're going after. And this is what you're saying. This is what you're saying, how you're saying it. Okay, that's the difference. Here's people we never sold any services to. They were leads, they were interested. We want you to go after them also, but you're gonna talk about just our MSP services in general. There's a big difference in conversation and approach. So extremely important that you focus on these things. Now, I did provide some quick tips on uh, some things here. There's some, these are, these are hyperlinks, so please, I'll give you guys, you guys all the decks, so you click on the links. Um, but pay attention to this, 46%, you said this before, I didn't, I didn't come in as trying to be a sales rep or a salesperson of any sort. 46% of salespeople didn't attend to go into sales. I'm gonna to venture to say that 100% MSPs did not go into it thinking they're gonna be in sales, um, but they all are. Um, social media, just to reiterate this, social posts, influence, they, they influence the purchase the, the purchase decisions of 83% of the US, of the US online shoppers. Um, how to increase business, very simple. This is on actually one of the links. Ask questions and listen. There's the 80-20 rule, right? In the beginning, the 80-20 rule applies to so many things, we know that. But in this particular case, it applies to the fact that in the beginning of a conversation, I'm asking questions only as a salesperson. I'm talking 20%, you're talking 80%. I'm asking all the questions that are important, so have your stuff ready. Um, showcase your full potential, don't hold back. You know, Make sure you answer the questions they need and solve their problems and show exactly how you're gonna do it. Assume the sale. If, I, if you tell me you need something, and I provide it for you, and you told me you, you're ready to buy, I, we're gonna keep going until you're telling me no. Stand out. Most of these MSPs stand out. I listen to them talk. They're really good talking to us. I don't get to see how they talk to their clients or prospects, but they, they seem to know their stuff and they stand out to me on a regular story, on a, on a regular basis. Um, tell your story visually, like this presentation deck I put together. Don't just have a conversation always. You know, Far too many MSPs walk in the door just thinking they're gonna talk about things. And it's like, yep, we'll take care of that. No, show them how you're gonna do it. Present things visually. People, people learn through various forms. Some people listen and hear things and can retain a lot of stuff out of that. Some people have to see visual imagery. You know, my good friend, Marty Stockman, actually pointed out in my, in my presentation how don't put all caps. People don't retain with all caps. So she was like, you need to do justice. Marty from Life Cycle Insights. If you don't know them, check them out. Anyway, that's your plug, Marty, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> So I don't want to go through all these because we got we have more to cover here and we have about 15 minutes left. So, um, but you know, again, we covered the sales, the marketing, what the relationships should look like, um, you know. And last but not least, like my good friend Inigo Montoya, you know, he <laughs> said, "Hello, my friend is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die." <laughs> Polite greeting, gave you his name, relevant personal link, managed <laughs> expectations. Do that with everything you do. We have to do it from vendor to partner. Partners need to do it from partner to client. It's across the board always. You know, that accent, man. That's just... Uh... <laughs> it's my Midwest, Northeast, non-Spanish, I believe he was, right? And no, can't do it. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I, I'm... I'm distracted now by uh, you know the, the the humorous accent, so I'm just totally off, uh, <laughs> off here. But so when um, so tell me a little bit about how OIT VoIP does this from a, a partner perspective. I mean, how sure um, you know how how do you guys make this happen for for your partners? Absolutely, good question. So everything I just preached about is not just preaching. Uh, we made a we made a substantial investment uh, earlier in the year to um, to really go to the next level with our partner program, and so we launched our partner central. And I won't go terribly into detail into this because it, it explains itself for the most part. But the whole goal was to again let's we've already been doing this physically before we added this in there, but we wanted to give the ability that where whether you're a channel partner or a white label partner, and we offer both programs that you would have a personalized portal for yourself. And not just a portal, just again, we've all been in this business for a long time and we know that you end up going to 15 portals, you know, to do your business. And that's why people are discouraged with working with vendors because they don't want it to go to one, to another, to another, to another. It makes zero sense. So we wanted to have a one-stop shop ourselves for you guys that you can go in here and take a look and say, okay, how do I run my business on day-to-day? -day? What are the things that I need? So back to the first things I said, when you're looking to select a, a partner or a vendor, you're gonna become a partner. Hey, I have an immediate opportunity. So we put a quote request dashboard in there for you, you know, and this gives you, 
instant access to what you need to do to do your job. This also communicates with our team. You know, so when you go and you do a new quote request, there's going to be an alert to my team and they're going to create the quote for you. And when you go through the new quote re request, it's very easy to do. Your, your, your information will populate here as the partner. You'll fill out the customer information here and you'll be able to do everything from their information to services to hardware and get the summary. Once that's done, you're gonna, you'll get the notification that it's done. And you'll then at that point be able to look and see what quotes were submitted, what quotes have been sent, how many, what deals have I closed, which ones have I lost? Not only that, but you can also click on here and see what, and see what they are, see what opportunities you want and what's going on. Okay, we did this because we want to give them that one stop shop approach to do everything seamlessly so they can focus on running their business. Okay, we want them focused on running their business, not worried about doing the things in the back end with us that they shouldn't have to worry about. Okay, um, I also talked about sales and marketing and how important these things are. So I'll, I'll go in the order I went with the deck. We'll go over to the marketing hub. We actually sat here and we thought about, okay, back to co-branded or white labeled content. So if you're a white label partner, you click on that and you can see content that's created. So when you guys say you don't have the content, it's here for you. Again, we're not saying you, you should use all of our content because you're an MSP. And I already showed you a graph that shows you multiple different products you should be selling. So if you're gonna stand out to your customers, they wanna know you have everything in order. They wanna know that you're able to, that you, you're almost like their Amazon for technology, okay? And you, should, and you should really treat it that way. So we actually made content that you can use for us. And you can see here, it's really quality content, good look. It's something, if somebody doesn't know you, has never seen you, if they're gonna see this, we really put a lot of effort into making sure you look good, okay? And you should be mixing this with your other contents. Again, if you're doing cybersecurity, if you're also trying to sell your own uh, help desk support, whatever it's gonna be, you should have all this in here. You know, you should, you should have a medley of content going out. And you, can, and you should use this, not just for email campaigns. These are things that you can set up as attachments and you can put in social media. You should be focusing on that a lot. We even went as far as writing out how an email should, an email campaign should be structured. Initial email from day one. So if you had a list into your, if you're using MailChimp, you put a list in, email one goes out today, right? In 17 days, another one goes out. 34 days, another one. 51, 60, that's best practices. That also doesn't get you in trouble for spamming, okay? Those are what best practices fall under. And we put our content in here but you're gonna export this, but you should be replacing it. These treat these as placeholders. So the first email should be an email about you guys, what you do, why you should know who we are. We're a local MSP, we work with so-and-so, we help blah, 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 whatever. Use this stuff, this is what it's here for. It's here to enable you. We wanna, again, we already educated you now. We're, we're enabling you and empowering you to do your job without us, okay? We even put together the sales hub. In the sales hub, you have your sales prospecting campaign. So like I said, have a campaign ready to go. Call, one, you know, day one, you get a lead. Here's your call script. I, we already wrote it for you. Again, you should make it your own, but at least it gives you an idea of where you want to start. You know, uh, let me go back into there. So when you're going through the sales prospecting campaign, make a phone call. Here's a follow-up email that we put together for you to send. Again, repurpose it, make it your own. Day three, day four, day seven. You can see I went far past that four contacts and four no's to get a yes because realistically it does take 12 to 13 to 14 outreaches in one way, form or fashion, okay? Along these lines also, I've sent invites on social media to people that they can see who I am and what I represent too, okay? What's um, amazing about this is that, you know, anytime you make a decision to bring on a new vendor, selling a new product or a new category, you, you, you have to have the marketing materials to be able to sell that, right? You know, you can't just say, all right, we're going to start offering a VoIP solution and you sign on board with a vendor. And then now what? What's next? I mean, you got to promote it. You got to get messaging out there. And it takes Absolutely. an incredible amount of time to put that stuff together. I mean, you put together one collateral piece and just one collateral piece, the amount of time it takes is incredible. Absolutely. And what you've put together here is very much a you know, the, the good old DFY done for you type of scenario. Um, that, I, I love that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, and we went, we went above and beyond. We, you know, because we're a VoIP provider, we work with vendors also that provide hardware. So Yay Link is one of our manufacturers. Okay. So you can see here, you, again, you replace our logo with your logo. You send out your Yay Link content. 
it's all here for you to do. You have no reason why you can't succeed at doing it. If you don't, it's just because you really didn't put the time or effort into it. That's the reality. We have, so you guys should as well. Um, now I could talk on and on about this because obviously I love this stuff, but we have eight minutes at the top of the hour. Uh, so I don't want to take up all the time. Is there anything anybody would like to, to cover? Any questions? I can tell you, Dan, if you want to talk about this, our upcoming events. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so if you if you have any questions, go ahead and either uh, throw them into the chat or uh, into the Q&A. Um, there, there are some great coming up, uh, events coming up here. Um, October 22nd at 6.30 p.m., um, which is my wedding anniversary. So I think uh, my wife's going to be a little disappointed that I won't be able to, you know, make her 21st, anniversary, 21st anniversary because I'm going to be, um, you know, at the tech bar, of course. So um, the tech bar podcast featuring, oh boy. Yeah, go I, ahead. Do it. Do it, Dan. Uh, Dennis. Uh, Zerovetsky. Betsky. Betsky. Yes. Yeah, De I mean, Dan, my good friend, Dennis. Dennis, yes. Yes. Um, so he'll be featured on uh, on that event, um, the 26th at uh, 12 o'clock, 12 a.m. Eastern time. No, the tech bar is 20, uh, this Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. Right. Yeah, the next the event 26th. Is, yes, is the MSP Trick or Treat, which you're part of. Yes. Uh, no, I just said 12 a.m. Eastern time. So that's where I just was thrown <laughs> off there. <laughs> um, so the, is the MSP Trick or Treat uh, with Lifecycle Insights. And uh, there is a link there. So please make sure you, um, we'll, we'll throw that link into the, uh, we'll have Taylor throw that link into the chat there. So everybody has that, uh, Taylor, if you could. Um, very exciting, uh, very exciting things with the trick or treat event coming up. And then of course on the 28th at 1 p.m. Uh, is gonna be the partner first webinar, the OIT VoIP partner first webinar featuring our good friend, Heather Margolis um, of Spark Your Channel. And she may just might have a rose um, with her on that day. <laughs> uh, she, uh, you know what? We're not going to get into that because we already have really, we're really yeah. sensitive to that. I don't even, I blame it on the fact that, you know, Ray and I didn't have long enough beards. Um, <laughs> that's the only thing I can really think of that is the only really endearing quality that Keith has that we don't have. Yeah. Um, that's it though. Uh, yeah. So, by all means, everybody, please. We are a very community centric organization. Our community is very, very large. You know, people like Dan uh, with everything MSP, Marty and Alex are on from Lifecycle Insights. And, and we got, we have about 15 to 20 or so vendors that are involved in this MSP trick or treat. Uh, this is a play for you guys to come and get some content, learn a little more about the vendors. There's, again, there's no booth, there's nobody there to talk to you. It's at your own. It start, that's why you put a start point. It starts at 12 a.m. on the 26th because it goes for several days. You can visit any vendor you want and trick or treat. There are people, vendors are putting in content and also some treats, which I have no clue what they are, but it's a good way for you to get some stuff that you guys need. Back to the content I just showed you for marketing, that's part of it as well. So by all means. And this Thursday, huge, the tech bar will be good. Uh, it's our Halloween episode as well. We will be having a spelling bee where we are going to, where we're going to try our best to spell Dennis's last name and pronounce mm -hmm. it. Um, so, and I'm the reigning spelling bee, spelling bee champion, just so everybody knows. So, um, let me see if there's any questions here. Uh, yeah. So I, I guess, um, one of the things I, you know, would like to ask you is, you know, we, um, we learned a lot about, you know, the, the, the partner portal um, and what you have done, especially with incredible marketing tools. I mean, the value of what OIT VoIP provides, I mean, right there in itself is uh, uh, tremendous. But when you take a look at OIT VoIP, uh, can you give us some more details of, uh, you know, of OIT VoIP and in, in the service itself? I mean, because it's sure. quite amazing. Absolutely. So, um brief background on us. We were an MSP at one point. Uh, and then, you know, just like all MSPs, like exactly what this conversation was about today, we started looking on, to add on to the services, right? So at one point we decided to partner up with telcos and we started selling uh, phone service. We spent a good decade doing that, reselling other people's stuff. And we realized we could do it better. 
um, we could be more effective and we could, we could create change in this. So we launched our program uh, in 2013. And from then till now, we are, we're supporting several hundred partners over across North America and, and all of their customers. We provide two programs between a channel and a white label program. Uh, and we offer a migration. We're one of the only ones in the industry that does this too, by the way. Um, we may give the ability for everybody to go from being a channel partner and going over to white label when they're ready. Um, it's extremely important that I, I, I stress that because we have a lot of partners that come in, they want to be a white label. What they have concerns on is getting their feet well with the technology, selling the service, understanding what's going on. Um, but also the biggest scare they always have is, well, I gotta do taxes and compliance. Um, that's always the preventing piece for them. So I will tell you now that not only did we, and I didn't get into it in the portals there, and I probably should have, and I'm going to kick myself in the ass for it, but we also provide the ability that we have, uh, we have the ability to um, offer the back office. So, you know, the, it's, it's important to know that because we've partnered up with other companies that can provide billing platform that can, you know, automate what they need to do for taxes. Also, we have compliancy uh, companies involved that will have uh, your compliance. So you're not going to be in a problem that is. And so we became, we did what, what I told you to do in this, in this call, become a one-stop shop and add on more services that are needed for your clients. The clients for us start with the partners. Um, yeah, that's it. I mean, we, we've, we've been going pretty strong. Like I said, we've covered most, all North America. We're very happy with it. Uh, our partners are happy and they're all part of our family. One of our key taglines is welcome to the family. So Brian wants to know. No, we are not selling MSP services. Good, good call. Um, we have, we do have legacy MSP clients that stick uh, stuck with the MSP part of it. We do not sell any MSP services at all anymore. It, we are, we are a phone carrier, Very and cool. it is 100, and we are hosted VoIP across the board. That is awesome. Uh, if anybody else has, we have like two minutes left here. If anybody else has any additional questions, um, please uh, throw them out there into the chat. Um, yeah, like Simon said, Simon says, hey, that you guys probably do that all the time, don't you? <laughs> so, well, we have other jokes for Simon. If you yeah, guys didn't yeah. see, um, he he did the, <laughs> yes, Ray, very short jokes. Um, Simon <laughs> introduced us for the last tech bar. If you guys did not watch the last tech bar, you need to do so because Simon is going to become a viral celebrity social media star. I'm sure of this. Yeah, um, I mean, yes. He says, um, Simon says the spooky neighborhood doors open at midnight on the 26th. So um, I'm a little afraid uh, once those doors open, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I just can see Sean with like a wig on and um <laughs> spooky face and i mean we I mean, who knows what ray has up his sleeve you know i mean um I well ray i mean you'll see don't worry well you'll things will be coming out soon enough um well, ray received his cape today <laughs> i don't even i don't even know what that's about but I, I can't i can't wait that is awesome well, hey, it's been it's been an awesome time uh, speaking with you today, learning about uh, how to find that hidden money, and uh, especially uh, learning a lot about OIT VoIP and in, in your portal. Um, uh, like I said, you know, just the the time and energy uh, that you guys have put together into that is just uh, amazing. I mean, it's something that you know, and let's face it, a lot of vendors put together some marketing materials for us to be able to to sell their services. But you guys have put together a very comprehensive solution that goes up and above, right? It's, it's not just, hey, let's just throw things, a few things out here. You've really put your, your time into it to, to ensure that they sell. Because let's face it, I mean, if it's, it's a partnership, you know, Absolutely. if the tools that you put, put out there aren't going to help an MSP sell, it's not going to do the vendor any good. So you know, you want to make sure that it's going to help the vent or help the partner sell because ultimately it's going to help you too. So it's, it's definitely a win-win type of scenario. Agreed. So. No, we, and, and we, we've had, we, our guys have done well. Our partners have done well. We're happy. We're happy to be part of that family with them. We focused on, and we started with focus on the infrastructure of this, of the technology itself, providing a quality phone service. We, we invest heavily on that to ensure 100% uptime with our people. I mean, we, we want to make sure that, that we're always accessible. 
We want to make sure that we're always able to help them. We want to make sure the technology is sound. And that's what we've done. We, we focus tremendously on all those things. So people process technology is in that order first. So we have all the right people, right places. And, and again, we've, we've been blessed. Oh, by the way, we do have the ability to give away uh, from our partners, Yealink, uh, T54W uh, phone. So Dan, at your discretion, I suppose. Um, yes. I would say whoever posts like something fun, the best picture of them like in action selling something. That's what I would like and, and, and be yeah. creative because it's, it's Halloween and we can all collectively vote on that. Yeah, that's great. Um, so what, why don't we do this? What's, um, we will put a posting out on the Everything MSP Facebook group. Uh, so if you are not part of the Everything MSP Facebook group, please make sure you go to uh, Facebook, search for us, um, or go to everythingmsp.com and then you can link right to it. But we'll put a posting out there about uh, you know the details to be able to win this phone. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Absolutely. So, well, with that being said, uh, Sean, um, OIT VoIP, Thank you very, very much for your time today and um, most importantly, your knowledge that you've shared with us. Um, Everybody that attended today, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate that. And um, we will have this uh, recording available as well um, for anybody that, uh, you know, you might want to share it with. And of course, for those that weren't able to make it today. So everybody have a great afternoon. Enjoy your day and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Peace out.